So before we even talk about the 2020 Surface Pro X, we have to talk about the 2019 model from last year. This is the one on the right, the one I'm cleaning because it's black and it gets a lot of fingerprints. But we have to talk about this because it was a special product. Like I was at the Microsoft event, I was watching and listening to Panos Panay do his thing and I couldn't help myself but think, wow, this is a two in one that's absolutely gorgeous. Like why couldn't they bring this design to the Surface Pro line? And then I finally got it in my hands and I, and I picked it up and I started looking at it and I'm like, there's one reason, it's too thin. Like imagine an Intel processor inside of here with no proper ventilation. It's a recipe for a disaster. Like it would just get too hot, it would slow down, the fans would kick on and it would be loud. But this with an ARM processor is totally possible. And I want a future of laptops that look like this, that are thin like this, that don't have fan noise as loud as some of the Intel processors get when they're under load. But we have to go through some hiccups and bumps before we get there. And that's what ARM is about right now on Windows. When this was announced, a lot of software wasn't compatible. Even Microsoft's own browser wasn't compatible. And then you take other applications that are x86 but 64-bit and it wouldn't run on the 2019 model at all. Now things have gotten better in a year. Like Microsoft's Edge browser is now ARM compiled, which means it runs fast, like just as fast as any browser on an Intel-based laptop. But not everything's perfect. Like you still can use 32-bit apps, but 32-bit apps are nowhere nearly as fast as they are on an Intel-based system. And if you wanna run 64-bit apps that are x86, forget about it, it's just not possible. Now Microsoft did say they're gonna be releasing an emulator in the near future that will allow you to run anything on these laptops, but the problem is even if you're running 32-bit or 64-bit x86 apps, two things are probably gonna happen. One, the performance is not gonna be as good, and two, the battery life is going to take a hit. Now that's not the end of the world. Because if you're someone who lives in a browser, kind of like you would on a Chromebook, or you're using all of Microsoft's apps with a few productivity apps like Zoom, Spotify, maybe you're doing a little Discord on the side, then this Surface Pro X is wonderful. Like wonderful. Like when I open this up, like look how fast that is. Boom, I'm in. Like that was literally in seconds, the on-demand opening of this laptop is like nothing else I've experienced on a Windows laptop. It's also much faster than it is on the 2019 model. Like you're not gonna get a big performance upgrade by buying the 2020 version like this SQ2, which is uh, based on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8C XXX processor, whatever it's called, is only about five to 10% faster. And if you were to like benchmark this against smartphone chips, it looks really slow. But that's the thing about ARM. If you have the hardware and the software to take advantage of the hardware, everything feels smooth. And that's the future of what Microsoft wants. More applications to be compiled for ARM. And when that happens, that means you're gonna get laptops that are super quiet, you're gonna get laptops that don't get super hot, and you're gonna get laptops that have insane battery life. Now, if you had the Surface Pro 19, buying the Surface Pro 2020 would be a waste of money. The upgrade, reason to do it is just not there. Like the only difference in terms of overall design quality is the processor that I just mentioned and the newer signature keyboards are a bit more sturdy. Like typing on this feels a bit more solid than it does typing on the 2019 model. The displays are exactly the same. Like it's still that wonderful three by two aspect ratio that has very color accurate panels, good color gamut, overall super solid. The webcam, 1080p, a really good webcam, better than the webcams you'd find on a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. I mean, you can't upgrade it, you know? Like you can't swap out the RAM to increase more. It's soldered onto the motherboard, but you do have access to the SSD. This one's, you know, it's kind of fast. It's faster than a regular SSD, but it's definitely not one of the fastest NVMe drives that I've ever used. And the big thing about these Surface Pro devices is that you can use it on a cellular plan. Like you can connect it using an eSIM or your own SIM and connect it to the network. Now I'm still not getting that 20 to 25 hour battery life that these companies are promising. I'm only getting about 13 hours and 46 minutes, but that's still impressive. And I think as time goes forward and the software gets better, then we're gonna see better battery life. 
Then there's Microsoft's digital pen. It's always there. It's resting inside of the magnetic display. It feels so good to write with. You take it out, tap the top once, the whiteboard appears. You can automatically go ahead and start jotting down notes. Tap it twice, you take a screenshot. You can go ahead and share it on social media or to a friend. Like little things like that make using this device feel great. But I'm not suggesting you buy this. Like you have to understand what you're getting yourself into. This is a Windows luxury Chromebook right now. Like you're living in a browser and you're using Microsoft applications and you're using a few 32-bit applications that run okay, but not as fast as the Intel laptop equivalents. If you can handle all that, then you're gonna love this thing. But I think for everybody else, if you're looking to do everything, like gaming, maybe some Lightroom, the list goes on, then you're still better off buying an x86 or Intel-based laptop. But one thing's for sure, the improvements have come a long way in a year. And I can't wait to see more ARM applications working on Windows because I want more laptops like this. I want more laptops that don't get hot. I want more laptops that have insane battery life and I want more laptops to be this thin. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Feel free to sub to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Like it as well if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I said that already, I'm losing my mind. And I'll see you guys in the next video.